G'day, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. You've joined the Pedal Picassos once again. I'm Rod. Thanks for coming back, but if it's your first time, please hit subscribe, give us a thumbs up. I'm diving deeper into the new X Trident Guitar Multi Effects Processor with the um, downloadable uh, free software editor for it. You can edit this beast very easily on the hardware itself. I'm actually going through the modulation block at the moment. Modulation block, nice color purple LED. And if you look at the graphic that we've got here in the uh, um, the editor, uh, you've got a Boss C1 chorus ensemble, or Roland chorus ensemble. And it's a very good emulation of it. Um, now, things to note, um, that is different to an original chorus ensemble. We, you can't actually switch between vibrato and chorus, unfortunately. You can't um, change the input level, high and low, and you can't change the level control. But what you do have controls over, and you can do it on the hardware as well, uh, you can change the rate, and as you adjust the rate, the rate on the emulation digital uh, will change as well. Your uh, intensity will change, and you can also change your depth. All right. So as you alter it on your hardware, your software is altering as well. All right, this is a, a lovely sounding chorus. Um, and if you deactivate the effect um, on the software, it deactivates it on the hardware and vice versa, okay? Now, I'm coming through a, a deluxe reverb. I'll just turn the chorus off. Um, Ibanez Roadster 1983 Steve Lukather model with Seymour Duncan's. I've got a split coil to single single coil in the bridge. That's the humbucker. So it gets a bit, um, a little bit broken up there as you punch the front end of the amp with humbuckers. Single coils. And I'll do that with some nice, uh, well, I'll do that with some clean chorus effects. Righto. The chorus ensemble, I hear you say. Um, here it is. Controls back to around noon. You've got the amount of effect with the chorus intensity. Now, this is not how the original uh, CE1 chorus ensemble operates. In chorus mode, you've just got the chorus intensity knob, just that one knob, that's all. Um, but in this emulation, you've got depth and rate which control your chorus. <laughs> So intensity right up, you've got a lot of chorus going on. Further, you can add the depth of modulation. And then right, right up to a wobble. Cool. All right, what's next, I hear you ask? All right, Stereo Chorus, is this an MXR? Is it a Ross? Is it an early MXR? I'm not sure, but it says Stereo. Already I like it. Once again, you've got intensity. Um, in this instance, depth is width. It's got a little bit more mid, mid and top end um, range than what the CE1 did. All right, so you get to be able to control the amount of bass and treble effect. Or switch out the EQ. The amount of chorus that's affecting those frequencies, that's what it is. It's not after, it's uh, before. So um, you can wind out the treble effect. 
which is where it's really pronounced. Not so much chorus. I don't have that wobble in the bottom end. I like how it is pronounced in the top end. Yeah, that's a lush. I mean, it's often bandied around that term, isn't it? Lush. When you're talking about chorus, it's a nice chorus. All right, what's our next? Okay, emulation of a boss flanger. Oh, that's wobbly, isn't it? Okay, feedback. Bring our feedback back a little bit. Metallic. Now, one thing that I would favour uh, a hardware flanger um, over an emulation is that you can grab and very easily control four knobs at once. If I'm wanting to do this on here, no, it's mouse drag and drop. If I'm wanting to do it on the hardware device, yes, I can, but I've just got to go to each. Um, uh, there's, there's one rotary encoder and you've got to select which parameter you want with the buttons below. It's interesting that on the um, hardware itself, the parameters are labeled um, rate, depth, level, and feedback, and we've got depth, rate, width, and feedback. So you're controlling your level on here, and I think this is a misnomer here with the width one. Um, It's effect level, so it's amount of um, flange um, combined with the dry signal. I'm sure you can get into those jet swooshing sounds with it. As far as a really liquid flanger, it's maybe a little bit limited, but I'm sure you can use it. Here we go. So uh, next one is a TC Electronic. Um, just between the two, switching between the two quickly. Now this is chorus and pitch modulator and flanger was the original TC electronic one. And you can't you can't switch between modes. Um, you've got parameters for rate, depth, and level. Um, on the actual graphic on the software, you've got intensity, you've got speed, width, intensity, and modes. They don't do anything. Uh, the mode switch obviously doesn't do anything. It's, it's uh, once again, it's just there for looks. So there's our rate. I 
like that for a fast chorus. I really do. <laughs> I like it when you bring it back slow with a lot of width in there. Nice. What's our next? All right, rotary speaker. Hello. good just like that. Slow speed, see what happens. Get some gnarly breakup. Okay, so giving you that uh, that Leslie, that faux Leslie effect. And the balance is, should be between the, 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 the top end and the bottom end if there were a split um, Leslie to affect how much um, rotation effect on top end, low end frequencies and top end. All right. Um, one thing that I have always liked um, after the vibrato. Oh, but this is good. Just rate and depth. It's got some real wobble to it. I really like that vibrato. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, um, D tune left and right. So you get shift controls for both. Just another nice chorus effect. So slightly tuning left and right. You can grab this modulation block and place it after your amp. Hopefully for true stereo. And I'm saying hopefully because um, I'm not uh, able to monitor this to see how it is as I'm recording, whether it's true stereo. Either way, it's very nice. Um, I will put my modulation uh, module back before my amp and we'll go to our next one, which is Evoib. There it is. That's really strange. I could not select that. Oh. Okay, so we've got another three that are available somehow in hidden menus. So we get up to tremolo on the hardware. We can shift to... Yes, that's interesting. Modulation, yes. Let's go there. Oh, here's a glitch in the machine. Ha ha ha! Right. Uh, this is firmware version one, I, I, I believe. So it uh, might be time for some feedback because um, yes, you can't scroll to get the Univibe up or the Phase 90 or the Phase 100. So let's just try the Univibe because I'm a, oh God, I love it. Now that's the chorus. And there's, there's our vibrato. Our uni vibe. You have a volume.
volume control. Of course, there is an instant um, decrease in output level when you engage the Univibe. Now, I'm finding when we hit effect bypass, that volume control is, is affecting it. So that doesn't seem to be bypass at all. That's a nice vibrato, um, no doubt about it, however you access it. Let's have a look at the phase 90. <laughs> That's a nice phaser. Uh, it, it is. With <laughs> wow. And the phase 100, will it be a four pole phaser? Yeah. So you can get to real gnarly phase territory. Thanks for tuning in. Um, that is all the modulation effects inside the new X Trident guitar multi effects processor. Um, if you've got one, or if you like it, drop us a comment in. Uh, if you found other little glitches, maybe in the first um, uh, firmware edition. But um, stay tuned for more updates and we'll delve into the reverbs and delays and compression and a few other um, tricks that this thing has up its sleeve. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.